Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining with us today for the webinar on interpretation of liver function tests organized by Society for Health Research and Innovation in collaboration with Sri Lanka College of Internal Medicine. Let me brief you all on the housekeeping rules. The webinar link will be available from 9 to 9.45 a.m. No late attendees will be allowed thereafter. The attendees need to follow the webinar until the end and submit the post-test questionnaire which will be sent at the end of the session in order to obtain the CPD certificate. I kindly request all of you to mute the mics and keep the videos off during the sessions. There will be question and answer session at the end of the webinar. If you all have any queries, questions, you can type in the chat function. Please check panelists and attendees so your questions can be answered. If you have specific questions or queries, please email us email on office313 at gmail.com. I hope you will gain the maximum out of the webinar. So without further delay, I would like to invite Dr. Anuradha Kajendran, consultant, gastroenterologist and hepatologist, teaching hospital, Jaffna. Over to you, madam. Thank you very much. Today, I am going to do a presentation on interpretation of liver function test. The lecture outline, first uh, introduction, the second one is liver function test and then how to interpret different liver functions, uh, some clinical case scenarios and the, at the end, the summary. The liver function test is a commonly requested test Abnormal results are detected in symptomatic or asymptomatic patients. The abnormal liver function test could be physiological or pathological. Available liver function tests are serum bilirubin, liver enzymes, alanine transaminase, aspartate transaminase, alkaline phosphatase, gamma glutamine transferase, prothrombin time and international normalized ratio, serum albumin levels. Special investigations are hepatitis serologies. If we found some abnormalities in liver function test, we can go ahead with the special hepatitis screening test and iron and copper studies, which will be used in Wilson's disease and hemochromatosis diagnosis, alpha-1 antitrypsin levels, and autoantibodies. We can detect the autoimmune disease of the liver, ANA, anti-smooth muscle antibody, anti-LKM antibody, and anti-mitochondrial antibody. Uh, considering the liver function test, one first one is serum bilirubin. Uh, just some brief uh, summary about bilirubin metabolism. Bilirubin formed in the body by red blood cell destruction. It initially it was unconjugated bilirubin and the conjugation occurs in liver. And liver excretes the conjugated bilirubin. It enters as a bile through the common bile duct and enters the intestine. Regarding the liver uh, bilirubin metabolism and disorders, three major groups of disorders. One is hemolysis. Excessive hemolysis causes increased unconjugated bilirubin in the blood. And due to the abnormal, second one is abnormal liver function, which causes the increase uh, conjugated bilirubin in the blood. And the third one is the obstruction of the biliary tree, which causes the increased uh, conjugated bilirubin in the blood. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the increased unconjugated bilirubin in blood caused by uh, increased hemolysis. Uh, this is the same slide. Uh, this also I already mentioned, there's, if there's a problem in the liver cells due to hepatitis, uh, it causes the increased conjugation bilirubin, conjugated bilirubin in the blood. 
and the next one is the obstruction uh, as we call obstructive jaundice then we just see the causes of isolated hyperbilirubinemia causes of unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia one is hematological causes as i mentioned earlier that excessive hemolysis then gilbert syndrome drugs for example rifampicin and Kriglanaja syndrome and physiological jaundice of the newborn isolated conjugated hyperbilirubinemia in dobbins johnson syndrome and rota syndrome the next liver function test amino transferases alt and ast in this reference range can vary between laboratories and population groups but best expressed as multiples of upper limit of normal levels do not correlate well with the disease activity or outcome uh, for example in the presence of ischemic hepatitis the liver function uh, the alt ast levels can go up to uh, 10,000, but it can improve within hours. Repeated measurements have limited role. Uh, repeating the liver function, ASD, ALT levels twi twice a day, those things not useful. No relation with serum bilirubin level. Um, for example, in ischemic hepatitis, even though the transaminases levels go about thousand so ten thousand the bilirubin normal amino transferases the organ localization the alt mainly in liver and kidney but the ast found in liver heart uh, skeletal muscles and red blood cells that's why in uh, muscle damage or during hemolysis the ast levels can go up <coughs> organ specificity alt is more specific for liver disease ast is less specific for liver disease in the cellular location the alt mainly situated in cytoplasm and ast in mitochondria but when what are the causes for mitochondrial damage increases the ast level mainly the alcohol the comparing the half-life, ALT has more half-life than AST. That's why there's a slower drop in ALT compared to the rapid drop in AST levels. ALT-AST ratio, the normal ALT-AST ratio is more than one. That means ALT is more than AST in normal situation. As I mentioned earlier, ALT mainly present in cytoplasm and released with minor liver cell injury. Even. AST is present in mitochondria and it, it will be released with severe injury. Uh, what's the importance of AST ALT ratio? I mentioned earlier that usually the ALT is more than AST, but some conditions, A LST is more than AST. What the main causes of more AST elevation are alcoholic liver disease. Uh, it could be either cirrhosis or alcoholic hepatitis. Any alcohol related liver disease, AST levels more than ALT. And in Wilson's disease also, AST levels more than ALT level mainly the liver cirrhosis which is the common condition we came across and some non-hepatic causes as i mentioned earlier the ast found in other tissues as well that's why he during hemolysis muscle disorders or after the vigorous exercise uh, during rhabdomyolysis ast levels elevated more than alt and during heart disease, for example, myocardial infarction, AST level go up. And in dengue fever also, AST levels more than ALT level. The common causes for raised transaminases, uh, both ALT and AST levels, one is alcohol, uh, medications. There are a lot of medications which can cause increased transaminase levels common thing 
which we used in non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs for pain relief and a lot of antibiotics and HMG CoA reductase inhibitors, those are statins and, and most of the anti-epileptic drugs except levetiracetam, all other anti-epileptic drugs can cause elevated liver enzymes and the anti-TB medications and herbal medications and illicit drugs. All these drugs can cause uh, elevated liver enzymes. The next one is non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, hepatosis, which is the increasing disease in our population. Uh, commonly we call it as NASH due to the increase in diabetes, obesity, diabetes, uh, dietary modification, and dyslipidemia. Uh, this is the common uh, cause found for liver enzyme elevation in most of our patients. Then the chronic hepatitis B and C, uh, which also increasing in our population due to the uh, drug addiction and IV drug use. The, then the less common causes, autoimmune diseases, hemochromatosis, which is much rare in our population compared to the uh, whites. Dilsen's disease and congestive cardiac failure and ischemic hepatitis. This is the common cause found in cardiology ward patients when they presented with hypotension, hypoxia, or increase uh, worsening of heart failure, their liver functions goes up, mainly the transaminases. Alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency and celiac disease. These diseases are uh, very rare in our population. And the endocrine diseases also, hypothyroidism and medicines also can cause uh, elevated liver enzymes. And disease of striated muscles, uh, with exercise or just myositis, the AST levels goes up. And the glycogen storage diseases, mainly in the children, the AST, ALT levels can go up. Uh, this is a diagram which shows the uh, pathway, how we have to investigate the raised ALT levels. If the ALT levels uh, one and a half times more than the normal, then uh, we have to investigate for liver disease. If it's less than one and a half times of normal, uh, then we can recheck the ALT levels in three months time. If it's still raised, we have to go for the investigation of liver disease. With the ALT elevation, if we found abnormal bilirubin levels or uh, prothrombin time or low albumin, then definitely we have to investigate for liver disease. Um, as may, I mentioned earlier, there are a lot of causes for ALT level, uh, elevation. We have to do the hepatitis screening, autoantibodies, iron studies, seroloplasmin levels, and the ultrasound scan abdomen to assess the liver, whether it's a chronic liver cell disease or just acute liver cell disease or fatty liver. Then the next uh, liver enzyme is alkaline phosphatase. It's not, not only in the liver, it's mainly originated from liver as well as the bone. But uh, some other causes also, the physiological rise can happen. One is uh, during the third trimester of pregnancy, the ALP is mainly from the placenta. And in the children during growth, it's uh, mainly from the bone origin. Uh, the common causes of raised alkaline phosphatase levels, uh, the physiological, uh, I mentioned earlier, women in the third trimester of pregnancy, adolescents, and some patients can have the benign uh, alkaline phosphatase elevation. It's due to the family. And pathological causes, uh, mainly, bile duct obstruction, primary biliary cirrhosis, primary sclerosing cholangitis, and the drugs also can cause the intrahepatic cholestasis. The other condition is a rare condition, adult bile ductopenia, 
and metastatic liver disease due to the obstruction it can cause cause the raised ALP levels and the bone disease. Gamma glutamyl transferase it's uh, found in hepatocytes and biliary epithelial cells. It's more specific uh, to liver compared to the alkaline phosphatase levels, but it can be elevated in other diseases as well. I'm going to show some causes uh, of raised gamma glutamyl transferases. Mainly the hepatobiliary disease, often with other liver enzyme abnormalities. If gamma GT elevated, definitely alkaline phosphatase also will be high. And the pancreatic disease, alcoholism, and COPD, liver renal failure, diabetes, myocardial infarction, other drugs also causes uh, raised gamma GT, but the main cause is hepatobiliary disease with obstruction. Uh, this is the, how we can proceed with the raised alkaline phosphatase levels. If gamma GT also increase, we have to think of liver related causes. If uh, gamma GT is normal, then we have to think of non hepatic causes, the bone or placental origin. Uh, if uh, alkaline phosphatase persistently elevated, we have to go ahead with the imaging, liver ultrasound scan. In the ultrasound scan, if there's any uh, evidence of bile duct dilatation, uh, we have to go ahead with the MRCP or ERCP. If no evidence of bile duct dilatation, then, then we have to think of mm, intrahepatic cholestasis, so um, primary biliary cirrhosis, primary sclerosing cholangitis. In that cases, we can check the autoantibody levels, anti-mitochondrial antibody, and uh, consider liver biopsy. Uh, if evidence of uh, liver masses so or metastatic lesions, we have to proceed with the further imaging with CT to find out the primary origin. Then the serum albumin levels, uh, uh, this, is a, uh, this indicates the chronicity of the liver disease. Uh, albumin is synthesized only in the liver. The half-life of albumin is 21 days. Uh, liver disease leads to reduced albumin production. Uh, short duration, for example, acute hepatitis, the albumin levels might be normal or there's a slight reduction in albumin levels. But uh, the chronic uh, liver disease, the prolonged duration of liver disease, uh, reduced production leads to low levels of serum albumin, for example, in cirrhosis. Other, other than the liver uh, diseases, some other causes also can lead to low albumin levels. One is protein malnutrition and the increased loss of albumin, either due to renal disease or chronic diarrhea, intestinal loss. The, the absorption problem and the production and the loss with, with all three, we can have the low albumin levels. Uh, the prothrombin time, uh, it measures the uh, aspect uh, blood coagulation depends on concentration of the clotting factors in the blood it can uh, go up prolonged value indicates reduced liver function it's a specific marker of liver failure uh, compared to the serum albumin level it's an acute marker but it's not a marker of liver injury for example in ischemic hepatitis Liver injury occurs and the transaminases levels goes very up very high, but uh, the prothrombin time will be normal in the initial stages. It's uh, useful for monitoring a degree of liver dysfunction. Uh, this is the flow chart uh, that shows us uh, how to investigate the abnormal liver function test. If uh, 
first we have to check whether only bilirubin elevation or ends with enzyme elevation if it's a bilirubin elevation then uh, we have to check the conjugated fraction or unconjugated fraction if uh, unconjugated fraction is high which means uh, less than um and the conjugated bilirubin is less than 20 percent and unconjugated bilirubin high we have to think of hemolysis if the conjugated bilirubin high then we need to think of liver diseases or biliary obstruction then to proceed with the imaging ultrasound scan if no biliary obstruction then think of hepatitis uh, in which uh, ALT, AST levels are also elevated and the mixed pattern uh, in this cholestasis plus hepatitis. If alkaline phosphatase is very high, then cholestasis. If evidence of biliary obstruction, then uh, due to the cholelithiasis or malignancies uh, causing obstruction, it causes the conjugated hyperbilirubin. Then uh, if the enzymes elevated, ALT, AST levels, uh, extrinsic causes also we have to think of uh, alcohol, obesity and hepatotoxic drugs. Then the viral hepatitis, in this hepatitis o A also there, but uh, uh, chronic uh, hepatitis mainly hepatitis b and c causing alt ast elevations and the intrinsic causes which is related to the liver dysfunction autoimmune diseases genetic and other diseases uh, and there, there's a alt uh, alp elevation ratio in which we can uh, divide into hepatocellular injury if alt levels uh, more elevated than alkaline phosphatase in this ratio. If it's the ratio is more than five, it's due to hepatocellular injury. If the ratio is less than two, uh, it could be mixed pattern or cholestatic injury. Then if it's a, the alkaline phosphatase elevation, if gamma GT also elevated, as I mentioned earlier, we have to check off the biliary causes. If in the ultrasound, if no biliary obstruction, we have to consider the alcohol cirrhosis, primary biliary cirrhosis, primary sclerosing cholangitis, and infiltrative liver disease like sarcoidosis, lymphoma, or TB. If uh, in ultrasound scan, biliary obstruction, uh, gallstone disease or malignancy. If gamma GT normal with uh, alkaline phosphatase elevation, think of uh, other causes, mainly bone disease. Some symptoms of liver disease, some patients uh, might found abnormal liver function during screening, those patients, asymptomatic patients. Jaundice, uh, right hypochondrial pain, those are the common symptoms uh, of uh, liver disease, but patients can have uh, features of acute or chronic liver failure features. Mainly the cirrhosis patients present with hepatic encephalopathy, upper GI bleeding, ascites, edema, and jaundice. Uh, clinical assessment, uh, as we all know, the history and examination is the important part in the clinical assessment. If a patient uh, presents with symptoms of liver disease or elevated liver enzymes during uh, screening or routine checking, we have to go through the history about alcohol consumption, uh, risk factors for viral hepatitis, intravenous drug use, sexual promiscuity, homosexual relationship, and tattoos, uh, and history about the body piercing, blood and or blood product transfusions. But these days, as we have the screening facilities, uh, this causing hepatitis is rare. And medications mainly, occupational exposure to toxins. 
some uh, slides about the uh, pregnancy related liver disease as uh, during pregnancy also the elevated liver enzymes found in some conditions one is hyperemesis gravidarum uh, intrahepatic cholestasis of pregnancy preeclampsia and eclampsia help syndrome acute fatty liver of pregnancy which is an emergency condition Hyperemesis gravidarum occurs in 0.3 to 2% of all pregnancies, usually within the first trimester. High transaminase levels occur in 50% of patients. The transaminase levels can go up to 24 above the normal range. For example, if the normal uh, range is uh, upper limit of normal is 40, then it can go up to 600, 800 uh, international units. Intrahepatic cholestasis of pregnancy, this is uh, defined as pruritus with elevated serum bile acids occurring in the second half of pregnancy, which results after delivery. Fasting serum bile acid concentration of greater than 10 micromole per liter. In this condition also, amino transferases can be increased by 20 times of uh, normal. Preeclampsia and eclampsia, it's characterized by hypertension and proteinuria after 20 weeks of gestation or within 48 hours of delivery. In this also, amino transferase activity can go up to 10 times of, of the upper limit of normal. Bilirubin levels are rarely increased in this condition. Uh, no specific investigations indicated in this uh, condition. HELP syndrome, as we know, in, in this also, there's a mild to moderate increase of amino transferases. The eleva by bilirubin elevation is mild. PTINR levels usually normal unless uh, there's evidence of disseminated intravascular coagulation or liver injury. In this also, we don't uh, proceed with liver biopsy or specific investigation. Uh, the acute liver, fatty liver of pregnancy, it's a medical and obstetric emergency defined as microvesicular fatty infiltration of hepatites, hepatocytes during the second half of pregnancy. In this, maternal and fetal mortality rates are significantly increased. So the immediate uh, delivery is indicated. And in this condition, patient is symptomatic. Patient might present with the features of acute liver failure or uh, right hypochondrial pain, vomiting, and jaundice. In this, uh, amino transferase is elevated, prothrombin time elevated, bilirubin elevated, and uh, the other investigations also hypoglycemia and elevated serum ammonia levels and lactic acidosis in severe disease. This is the main um, liver disease related to pregnancy to be attended immediately. Then uh, I'm going to discuss about few cases. Then it would be easy for to you understand the um, uh, liver function test. So, case one is a 20 year old university student presented with fever and body aches for three days, followed by right hypochondrial pain, vomiting, and jaundice. On examination, she is deeply ictere, tender hepatomegaly, and no flapping tremors or edema. And uh, investigation wise, uh, her AST level is 2500 and ALT was 2000, and the serum bilirubin 14 milligram per deciliter, and INR 1.2. Ultrasound scan, no biliary obstruction, uh, acute liver parenchymal diseases. Um, what do you think the likely diagnosis, and how will you proceed? In this, uh, the, mainly the liver enzymes as well as the serum bilirubin elevated. It's an acute onset of disease, just a three-day history with the prodromal symptoms, fever, body ache. 
and write hypochondrial pain. Uh, on further exam, uh, questioning, she mentioned that she has taken meals from outside as well. And the likely diagnosis is acute hepatitis, likely cause hepatitis A. In this uh, situation, we need to proceed with hepatitis A IgM levels. Uh, why not autoimmune hepatitis? No other features of autoimmune diseases. And it's an acute onset with very high transaminases and high bilirubin levels. The case number two, 50 years old, uh, non-alcoholic patient with type 2 diabetes and dyslipidemia for 10 years on routine screening found to have elevated liver enzymes. The AST levels uh, 100 and ALT 150. And she has slightly elevated gamma GT. Rest of the liver functions were normal. Uh, the likely diagnosis and how will you proceed? The likely diagnosis is SNASH, uh, non-alcoholic steatohepatitis. The reasons are uh, she has the ALT elevation more than AST elevation. The AST elevation more than ALT elevation in uh, alcohol-related liver disease. This is non-alcoholic uh, liver disease. And uh, how we can proceed? We have to arrange ultrasound scan abdomen to assess the... Um, to exclude the fatty liver disease and in this situation also we have to proceed with the chronic hepatitis screening mainly the hepatitis b and c to exclude uh, other concomitant hepatitis the case number three it's a 23 years old male presented with severe right hypochondrial pain and jaundice he has the history of binge drinking alcohol drinking uh, and found the liver function test like this. AST levels 400, ALT 300, uh, bilirubin levels 16 milligram per deciliter, and INR is 2.1. And on examination, he has the deep, he was deeply ecteric and had the tender hepatomegaly. The likely diagnosis. Uh, is alcoholic hepatitis. The reasons, AST level elevations more than ALT level elevation. And compared to the transaminase elevation, the bilirubin elevation and INR elevation is very high. I, as I told you earlier, the um, mitochondrial injury which causes the AST elevation and uh, alcoholic hepatitis is a caused by a severe liver injury and the prognosis is also poor. Case number four, 65-year-old male with the history of chronic cough started on a medication two weeks ago presented with nausea, vomiting and jaundice. Um, these are the liver function tests, ALT levels of 330 and AST 300 with the alkaline phosphatase 450, bilirubin 4 milligram per deciliter. Ultrasound scan abdomen, normal, no evidence of biliary obstruction. In this case, uh, the patient 65 uh, who was having the chronic cough, then the likely diagnosis is he was uh, started on medication for uh, tuberculosis and uh, the trans enzyme elevation and the altered liver function test due to drug induced, anti TB drug induced liver injury. In this case, we have to withhold the liver anti TB medications and monitor liver functions. We can consider the alternative drugs. The case five a 70 year old female with the history of ischemic heart disease and ventricular dysfunction presented with acute shortness of breath and chest discomfort. On admission, her blood pressure was 80 by 50 and uh, SpO2 levels 88%. The next day, the liver function test revealed AST levels of 12,000 with ALT levels of 9,000 with normal bilirubin and INR levels. The likely diagnosis is ischemic hepatitis with acute liver injury. Uh, which suggests the ischemic hepatitis is uh, 
very high transaminases with normal bilirubin and iron nerve. In this case, the transaminases levels will come down quickly if the no further episodes of hypotension, hypoxia, or hypoglycemia are there. But if the enzyme levels rising with uh, INR and bilirubin elevation, we can consider the neck infusion. Case number six, 53-year-old patient with regular alcohol consumption without any medical diseases presented with abdominal distension and reduced level of consciousness. His liver functions, AST 70, ALT 52, an alkaline phosphatase of 200, bilirubin 3 milligrams and INR 1.5, albumin levels of 3 and globulin 3.5. Likely diagnosis, he has clinical picture of uh, chronic liver cell disease as well as the uh, cause also there's alcohol consumption. This is cirrhosis, decompensated cirrhosis. Next step, we have to proceed with ultrasound scan abdomen to confirm the diagnosis. Case number seven, uh, 45 years old female presented with right hypochondrial pain, fever and vomiting. She has past episodes of right hypochondrial pain as well. In this, the liver enzymes levels, uh, ALT 200, AST 180, and uh, compared to ACLT levels, very high gamma GT and alkaline phosphatase, and very high bilirubin levels with increased direct fraction. She has elevated inflammatory markers as well. Ultrasound scan reveal dilated common bile duct with filling defect in the distal CBD and multiple gallstones. This, uh, in this patient, the diagnosis is polydolithiasis with cholangitis. Uh, we have to proceed with CECT and ERCT and intervention. Case number eight, uh, 25 years old patient found to have elevated serum bilirubin levels during employment checkup. ALT, AST in normal range and elevated serum bilirubin, isolated serum bilirubin elevation only. And in blood picture, there was no evidence of hemolysis. And the ultrasound scan abdomen was normal. Then the likely diagnosis is Gilbert syndrome. We need to proceed with direct and indirect fractions of bilirubin. In Gilbert syndrome, isolated indirect hyperbilirubinemia. Rest of the liver function tests were normal. Case number nine, a 23 years old male presented with superficial thrombophlebitis to surgical unit. On examination, he has tattoo marks as well as multiple needle prints. His ASD levels 150 and ALT 200. Serum bilirubin in normal range and the ultrasound scan abdomen normal. The likely diagnosis, he has the high risk history and likely diagnosis is hepatitis C. In this condition, we have to proceed with hepatitis C antibody levels. If it's positive, then to proceed with hepatitis C RNA levels, quantitative assay. The reason is sometimes false, we can get the false positive hepatitis C antibody levels. Then to confirm the diagnosis, hepatitis C RNA levels is important. The last case, 41-year-old male presented with itching, loss of appetite, loss of weight and jaundice for three months. Uh, liver function test, ALT 88, AST 74. An alkaline for cetes levels of 1000 and gamma GT of 800. Ultrasound scan abdomen, there's a segmental bile duct dilatation. And the likely diagnosis, um, he has some sinister symptoms as well as evidence of biliary obstruction. I, uh, I didn't mention the bilirubin levels. The bilirubin levels were uh, um, 14 milligram per deciliter. The di diagnosis is uh, cholangiocarcinoma. We have to 
proceed with uh, MRCP and ERC. I received uh, some questions, uh, sorry, uh, summary. The liver function test are simple tests that help in diagnosing the presence of liver disease. Uh, differential diagnosis for uh, liver disease and uh, other diseases as well, assessing the severity of liver disease, monitoring the progression of improvement in liver disease. Various tests differ in their purpose. High serum bilirubin indicates impaired excretion that, but can occur in other conditions as well. ALT or ASD levels indicate injury to the liver cells but do not inform about the severity of disease or likely outcome. The best example is ischemic hepatitis in that uh, very high liver ASD, ALT levels but it will come down to normal within few days but uh, in Alcoholic hepatitis, even though the ALT ASD elevation is less than 500, the outcome is poor. Low serum albumin often implies chronic liver cell disease. And prothrombin time is a marker of liver failure and helpful in serial monitoring of such patients. Uh, prothrombin time, uh, we have to check during the acute uh, liver injury situation. I already received some questions uh, from the team. One is uh, interpretation of hepatic failure. Uh, this uh, consists of clinical assessment. If there are in, uh, presence of jaundice, presence of mainly the hepatic failure features, confusion, flaps, um, in clinical site and the um, hepatic failure, it's mainly the elevated PTINR levels. The next uh, question is, what's the frequency of checking liver function test in a patient with grade one fatty liver? Actually, there's uh, uh, in the radiological assessment, they are classifying as grade one, two, three fatty liver. But uh, as a hepatologist, we worry much about the liver enzyme elevation. Uh, the fatty liver, first is uh, fat deposition fatty liver. Then next step is the inflammation uh, or uh, non uh, state of hepatitis in that uh, enzyme started to elevate. If the liver enzymes level, ALT, ASD levels elevated more, in some patients we have 300 or 400 levels. In such patients, we have to monitor them frequently with the lifestyle modification and treatment. Uh, most of the time, we proceed with the three monthly interval to check the ASD, ALT levels. If the patient have grade one fatty liver and with normal uh, liver enzymes, if uh, we can check it in six months or one year time, that's fine. There's no uh, strict uh, uh, cutoff time. Depend on the liver enzymes level, we will decide the uh, frequency. And interpretation of protein levels and specific liver functions, as I mentioned earlier, the um, Albumin, low albumin levels indicate uh, chronic liver disease, but the low albumin levels can occur with the other condition as, as well in malnutrition and uh, renal loss as well as intestinal loss. But some conditions are elevated gamma globulins levels occur in multiple myeloma and other conditions. Uh, compared to the albumin levels. Uh, the next question is serum pre-albumin level uh, routinely doing acceptable test. Uh, in that, the serum pre-albumin levels have a short half-life, one uh, two days, compared to the albumin levels, which has the uh, half-life of 21 days. Uh, this is... Uh, mostly useful to assess the acute uh, or short-term nutritional status of the patient. 
this is helpful uh, in assessing preoperatively uh, the surgery outcome patients but uh, i don't think it's uh, need to be done as a routine test uh, the albumin levels is better than the pre albumin levels then the value of gamma gt i think i explained during my lecture this is a liver specific but can be elevated in other conditions as well the importance of alt ast ratio if uh, ast more than alt there are certain conditions uh, but the usual one is alt more than ast the normal finding diagnosis of viral hepatitis in this viral hepatitis uh, the enzymes elevations uh, high usually uh, in thousands with in p serum bilirubin levels uh, we need to proceed with the specific screening test uh, depend on the history uh, if the patient have high risk behaviors then we have to go ahead with the hepatitis b but uh, common viral hepatitis uh, in our population hepatitis a due to, due to the fecal oral transmission uh, differentiation of diseases based on liver function test uh, i think i mentioned earlier then the next question is when we should start neck um, actually the neck is indicated for the paracetamol overdose but in acute liver failure, uh, due to other causes also, uh, we can give NAC as a supportive management. In this situation, the, either patient has clinical features of acute liver failure, uh, hepatic encephalopathy, or elevated PTINR levels uh, with, along with transaminases and bilirubin levels. Um, then the chronic liver cell disease is there any genetic or agrochemical correlation there's uh, definitely a genetic correlation in chronic liver cell disease mainly with the uh, non-alcoholic uh, fatty liver disease there's pn pla3 and some other genes um, this can there's a genetic correlation for nephold and agrochemical uh, correlation, actually, I don't know. We don't have much data as well. Uh, agrochemical correlation mainly with the renal disease, uh, the liver disease uh, issues, uh, I'm not sure. Uh, liver enzymes in normal liver or severe dysfunction, this uh, sometimes, in severely dysfunctioning liver also can uh, with the severe liver disease also we can have the normal liver enzyme level but the serum bilirubin level will be much high it can go up to 20 milligram per deciliter but the uh, asd alt levels could be normal uh, how to demarcate uh, nephil from nash without liver biopsy I think uh, this uh, this questions they had asked uh, about NASH and cirrhosis. Nephild is a spectrum of disorders. First, uh, in Nephild, first uh, step is fatty liver. Then uh, second step is non-alcoholic steatohepatitis. Then the third step is fibrosis. And the fourth step is cirrhosis. In this, uh, in the scan, we can just say the fatty liver then the uh, to exclude fibrosis the gold standard is liver biopsy but we can um, have do the fibro scan in that um, can assess the fibrosis uh, depend on the scores uh, but uh, some other scores as well there's a um nephil fibrosis score fit four score in that we have to check the liver biochemistry the enzyme levels and the platelet levels with the patient's age if we put on the app we can get the fit four uh the scores in that depend on the score we can exclude the uh, fibrosis 
and the risk of fibrosis. Thank you. That's all. Uh, Thank you, Madam, for the comprehensive presentation. Uh, there are some more questions forwarded by the audience. Okay. Uh, the first question is, uh, what are the occasions we have raised gamma GT without hepatic disease? Uh, that in some pancreatic disease, uh, pancreatic malignancies, we can have the elevated gamma GT even without uh, bile duct obstruction. Uh, I think I put a slide on uh, uh, that earlier. Uh, the, uh, these are the causes, pancreatic disease. Uh, alcoholism, uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, renal failure, diabetes, and MI. This slight elevation of uh, gamma GT can occur even in the uh, um, NASH, that's a hepatobiliary disease, in that also gamma GT elevation occur. Thank you, madam. There's another question. How do we diagnose congenital hyperbilirubinemia? Um, Congenital hyperbilirubinemia, there are some causes, uh, as uh, I mentioned, that conjugated and unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia. If we, uh, if rest of the liver function is normal, we have to go ahead with the specific test, actually. Actually, I am also not familiar these days with this test. Uh, this uh, for the Gilbert's uh, with the fasting uh, in Gilbert syndrome with the fasting the in, indirect hyperbilirubin levels goes up compared to the non-fasting sample and there's uh, some testing for the Dubin Johnson and Rota syndrome also Thank you very much, Madam, for clarifying the questions from the audience. Uh, so we come to the end of the webinar today. I would like to thank Dr. Anradha Kachendran, consultant gastroenterologist and hepatologist, teaching hospital Jaffna. Thank you, Madam, for sharing your knowledge with us today, spending your valuable time. And I would also thank the participants for joining with us today. Please find the link for the post-test assessment and submit in order to obtain the CPD e-certificate. I hope you all improved your knowledge on interpretation of liver function tests, participating in the CPD productively. And I invite all of you to join the next CPD session, which will be conducted on Sunday 27th. Thank you.